Hello my fellow BL enthusiasts. The first six months of 2021 ended and I think these six months had the highest number of BL releases in history. I have counted 40 plus BLS, and I think I still missed some from Philippines. Due to the high number of BLS, I will not be reviewing each and every BL released, nevertheless I will do a short review of the popular and most awaited ones. This will be a long video hence you can check the description section, I have timed the BL review so you can watch the review of your favorite BL if you do not want to watch the full video. In the month of January, there were 5 popular BLS that were carried forward from 2020 and ended there on, on January itself. So let's first review those 5. Manner of Death The Good the chemistry of Max Tool. The story outside of high school, college setting. The thriller plot with lots of violence, kinda gave Netflix murder mystery vibe. Exposed real issues of illegal abortion and prostitution racket involving high profile people. The fluffy chemistry of Thad and Sorn which was not sexualized, which was good as Potter was only 17. Inspector M running around his house wearing just boxers. He is an eye candy even on uniform too. The bad. The pacing, sometimes too fast sometimes too slow. The plot holes especially on episodes 11, 12 and 13. A bit unrealistic story, from the main leads being close so soon to everybody recovering too fast from their injuries. It missed the story of Inspector M and Dr. Oat. They could have added a total of 10 minutes of screen time and accommodated their love story too. It would have been beneficial to the series. So, hit or a miss? Than type. The good. Chemistry of Mew Golf. Golf's improved acting. The NC scenes featuring Mew Golf. Good looking support cast. The bad. Lack of plot, the series could have been wrapped up in just 5 episodes or less. Too much screen time of support cast who contribute very less to the main story. Under utilization of the actor mild as techno, he could have delivered so much, but alas. Wedding of Thorn which nobody cared about. Type being a victim of childhood trauma does the same to Fiat, where is the logic behind this? Almost everything else, even the OSD was also not in the level of season 1. So, hit or a miss? Tun Hun Chun La Tea. The Good. The Fresh Pairing of Pod and Cow. The Chemistry of Mike and Top Tap. Neo try as na, his acting and comedic timing. The bad. Usage of old trope which gave the 2018 era vibe. Too regressive, from main leads taking his friends to a brothel to university level guys having surrogate child just because their father wanted grandchild. Representation of LGBT in negative way. So, hit or a miss? Gen Y. The Good. The Chemistry of Kimon and Copter. Good Looking Boys. The Story of Pock and Tong, especially their last sex scene. The Bad. Too many side characters, difficult to catch up at first. Too many plot holes. Why Thano chose Wei Yu instead of Fi? Wei Yu being a crybaby, it feels jarring. After first few episodes it becomes boring. The story and side characters are a mess. So, hit or a miss? <laughs> Color Rush. The Good. Fresh storyline. Manga feel. Good looking leads. The Bad. Missing plots not addressed properly, like the missing mom and aunt plot. Two short episodes, which won't let more character as well as plot development. The chemistry though good, 
is sometimes awkward. Like most Korean BLS something feels off. So, hit or a miss? January was also the month when the most awaited series like 1000 Stars and We Best Love Ed. Let's take a look at those individually. A Tale of 1000 Stars One of the most anticipated series, already had massive following even before airing. The Good Earth Mix Chemistry The storyline, based on a very popular novel, and something not involving high school college setting. The supporting cast, from Namon, Drake, Cow, Champ to the Kids. The background score as well as the OST. The acting and direction. The bad. Pacing fell a little flat during episode 5 to episode 7. The unnecessary mystery about Tan being the prime suspect of Torfun's death. A lot of beautiful moments from the novel were omitted. It would have been more beautiful if those were included. So, hit or a miss? We best love, number one for you. The good. The chemistry of Samu. The acting of the leads as well as the support cast. The direction and screenplay that made an ordinary story into an outstanding one. Some of the moments and the kisses were really nice. The bad. The actors looked a bit aged to be university students. Either the length or the episodes should have been increased so the pacing of the development of feeling would be a bit easy to catch up. So, hit or a miss? <laughs> to my star. The good. Fresh storyline. Acting, editing and direction. The OST. Giving movie vibe. The kiss was better than most Korean BLS. The bad. Story a bit unrealistic. The editing was off on some places. So, hit or a miss? <laughs> the month of February gave much awaited BLS like lovely writer, You Make Me Dance. My bromance as well as other lesser knows BLS like Word of Honor, Deal Lover and Brothers. Lovely writer. The good. The chemistry and acting of Cow Up. The story, screenplay as well as the direction. Raised the issues surrounding the BL industry, shipping culture and toxic fandoms. The realistic kiss scenes which never felt like enough. The progressive inclusion of consent. The bad. Some of the episodes felt a bit long. Unnecessary drama on last two episodes. Some characters were really annoying. So, hit or a miss? <laughs> Word of honor. The good. Some bromance scenes were really daring. The chemistry and acting of the leads, Simon Gong and Jang Han. The looks of the actors, almost all of them were eye candy. Nuxia theme. The story, screenplay as well as the comedic moments. The bad. The censorship. The screenplay fell to flat around episode 24 to 27. So, hit or a miss? You make me dance. The good. A story focusing on dance. The chemistry of the actors as well as their looks. The story and the screenplay with less plot holes. The story focusing only on the main couples, no side couples to take away the time. The OST. The bad. The unrealistic ending. Somewhat cliché hopes of turning on the radio at last, the red thread and the pinky finger on bus scene. So, hit or a miss?
the month of March gave one of the most awaited series like History 4, We Best Love, Fighting Mr. Second, as well as other series like Man Who Defies the World of B.L., Second Chance, Why Destiny and Love Poison 2. We Best Love, Fighting Mr. Second. The Good. The leap of five years make the actor's age perfectly fit the storyline. The acting, direction and screenplay. The chemistry of Samu. The story of side characters. The OST and the angst. The bad. The reason of separation being unrealistic. One instance of assault. So, hit or a miss? History 4, Close to You. The Good. Li Cheng and Mu Ren Storyline. The Chemistry of Li Cheng and Mu Ren. The OST. Good Looking Actors. The Bad. Problematic Storyline. Sloppy Screenplay which was nowhere near the History 3 series. Everybody got away with sexual assault, both the stepbrother and the boss. So, hit or a miss? Man Who Defies the World of BL. The Good. Manga Feel. Excellent Comedy. The Small BL Cliché Stories. The Acting of the Main Lead Mobu. The inter -a song The Bad. A Bit Way Over the Top. Too Short. Just four episodes. So, hit or a miss? Why Destiny? The Good. Seven stories consisting of two episodes each. Already established as well as New Ship. The stories are somewhat new. Keng Puth's story about Fuck Buddy, both the execution as well as plot was good. The bad. Screenplay and direction was bad. Most of the episodes felt like fan service only. The pacing was too slow, I set the speed at 1.25 for almost all the episodes. Even though the attempt was unique and good, the execution was not up to the mark, so, hit or a miss? April was the month for much awaited fish upon the sky, Papa and Daddy, Nobleman Ryu's Wedding, Call It What You Want, Skinship 2 and Close Friend the Series. Fish upon the Sky. The Good. Fresh Pairing of Bond and Fuin. The Chemistry of Neo and Louis. The Comedy, especially done by Neo and the Angel Gang. The OST. The Feel Good Storyline. The bad. Typical GMMTV feel. Usage of a lot of overused tropes. Bad kisses. The female friend of the lead causing trouble trope. So, hit or a miss? <laughs> Papa and Daddy. The good. Talks about the real issue of gay parenting. Realistic struggle of gays in Asia. The actors, their chemistry and acting. The acceptance shown by parents and society. The bad. The ending, nobody hides that big matter with their partner. The pride moments felt like documentary. Pacing of later episode was off. Made up issue to provide content for second season. So, hit or a miss? Nobleman Ryu's Wedding. The Good. Historic Setting. Good looking actors who were already popular in other BLS. Some comedic moments. The Bad. Story and screenplay had very less to offer. Gets boring after some time. The acting is also underwhelming. So, hit or a miss? Call it what you want. The good. 
exposed the BL industry. Some realistic feel. Good looking actors. The bad. Good attempt but execution was underwhelming. The series deviated from main issue and focused more on the fluffy moments. So, hit or a miss? The month of May had one of the most awaited I promised you the moon, and Nittiman, which ended by the time I made this video. I have reviewed both I promised you the moon and Nittiman on my channel please check those. There are other ongoing series like Sue Sumnoy, Austin Love, Hometown Embrace, Golden Blood, Beloved in House, Light on Me, Top Secret Together and Stuck on You. A final verdict can only be given once they are finished so it will be on another video around year end. See you in regular videos.